line. We are zooming from my kitchen into your home or your workspace, and it's great to be with you. We have a great hour ahead of us. Later on, we'll be talking with Melanie Denise Cunningham and Dr. Amy Young. Melanie Denise Cunningham is known as Tacoma's Peace Queen, and she will be here to talk about another gathering that she um, has brought to fruition because she is a great visionary for our city. Um, Pierce County elections are right around the corner. So Auditor Julie Anderson is here to talk about um, your ballot, things to remember, how to navigate your ballot so you don't want to miss that either. Uh, Tacoma Film Festival will be here. Wade and Ernest will be here to talk about uh, the submission and what you can expect from some of the great films that you'll see across the grand cinema screen. The Humane Society will be here with their pet of the week. And with me now are three artists that are here to talk about art at the Armory because October is Arts Month in Tacoma. And I would tell you that every month is Art Month in Tacoma, but we like to talk about it more than usual uh, in October. Please join me in welcoming Adrian Milanio. You are Arts at the Armory artist. It's good to see you. Hi, thank you for having me. I appreciate the time being here. Oh, my pleasure, my dear. Katie Dean, you are also another artist at the Armory. Welcome, my dear. It's good to see you. I appreciate you guys inviting me to, to share. And then, of course, rounding this out, beautiful, Christina Batiste, you are also an artist at the Armory for this segment. Christina, thank you for being here. You are very welcome. All right, so let's get to it, as my grandmother would say. So... Let's talk about, first off, this question is for all three of you. And the question is, tell me about your artistic work and what mediums do you work in? And so Adrian, I want, the, I want to start, you get to start it off and then we'll have Christina end it. We'll put Katie there in the middle. So Adrian, let's talk about your artistic work. What mediums do you work with? Yeah, so I'm an R&B artist from Tacoma, Washington. I primarily uh, do a lot of the R&B stuff in my own music, but outside of that, I'm also a producer slash mixing engineer for artists that need those services and that sort of thing. So I kind of work in my own artistry in terms of my own music, but I'm also behind the scenes in producing and helping other artists get their visions come to life too. Wow, that is impressive. And it's impressive that you're, you're lending a hand to other artists because sometimes artists get so busy and rightly so trying to promote themselves as they should be 24-7. Um, they don't get a chance to um, reach out to somebody who maybe is past a milestone and say, hey, this is how I worked that. So good for you, Mr. Adrian. Um, Katie, tell us about your artistic work and what mediums do you work on? Yeah, so I'm a printmaker and I hand carve linoleum blocks from original sketches and then I when I carve the blocks I take them over to a letterpress and I print them uh, with an antique letterpress. Yeah and then I um, a lot of my work is really colorful so I use multiple um, blocks to create all the color layers and then from the originals I can design greeting cards that I wholesale as part of my business and then I create fabric reproductions in the form of um, kitchen towels that are really popular for the holiday season and I'm starting to do um, wall hangings small small tapestries yeah Wow, that that's impressive. And when you when you say the word linoleum, my eye went right down to my kitchen floor, and I was like, linoleum, that kind of linoleum. Well, I think it's like linseed. Um, you know, okay. the old old style of linoleum that they used to use. What in like the forties? Okay. Okay. Yeah, and it's gray, and I've seen it also in um, like a rust color. And um, it comes in a sheet, but for the letterpress, it's mounted to a block because you have to lock it into a, a, a metal chase. Okay. Yeah. So that's, it's unfortunate we can't do studio tours because it's fun to be able to show people the equipment up close. I know. I know. Absolutely. And, and I have to say that, you know, 
Uh, Katie is probably the only one of the other two of you that knows about a 1940s piece of linoleum. So <laughs> there we go. We were talking about Howard Cosell before we got on the air, and Katie pulls a 1940s reference out. Christina, let's talk about your work, because you are sitting um, in what I think is probably your studio. So uh, what mediums do you work with? Water, and yes, this is my studio. So I work um, on clay. That's my that's my medium. And um, yeah, it is unfortunate we can't do the studio tours, but this is where I work, and I make functional pottery. So I make cups and bowls and plates. Here's a little example of, of one cup I've made in porcelain um, and and functional dishes. So that is what I do. I, I love that. I, I was telling um, my partner that um, my passion for pottery in China knows no limits. It's awful. I mean, I have enough China that my mother-in-law walks in and goes, are the Kennedys coming for dinner? It's so bad. It's so bad. Adrian, let's talk about uh, how long you've been creating art and what got you started. Because Adrian, you look so young. You have a baby face. That doesn't mean anything. But how did you get started? Sure, yeah. So I probably started writing songs seriously about five years ago when I started college. So the thing for me is like, I kind of use music as like an outlet to express myself, like in terms of like when a relationship goes bad or when I have a life experience that is just, you know, frustrating or um, that sort of thing. And for me, I kind of was just writing consistently. And then one day uh, when I was in college, I kind of checked, like I had songs uploaded on Spotify. And then I saw that those songs were starting to trickle up and they were starting to take off and I was like hmm I wonder if there's a way for me to be able to kind of scale what it was that I was doing because I was starting to get people that were starting to reach out to me to, to, to collaborate and network and that sort of thing it was just one of those things that I was like I've always been a musician since I was in elementary school and middle school but then just the the buzz that I've created around my music specifically started to take off when I was in college and ever since then I've been pretty hooked on it so that's kind of like how I got started. Uh, you know, I love that. I, I, and I, I love the fact that it didn't take somebody to say, come on, Adrian, you could look at Spotify and go, wait a minute here. I think I've stumbled upon something. So good on you. Katie, tell me something that the visitors will learn while visiting your booth space. Well, it's a little tricky without having the equipment there. Um, but I usually at all shows bring um, some examples of carvings so they can see and touch and feel up close. Um, and then I, I may bring some layering sheets to show people in the past with tours, it's been nice to be able to show people how those colors layer on each other to um, get the full, the full deal. Um, yeah, and then I probably, I don't know if this is something that will be a learning thing, but I usually do like a giveaway. So I'll have like a, I don't know, greeting cards or maybe a towel or something to give away. So ah. yeah, that's probably about it. <laughs> that is very generous of you because, and also very smart because giveaways cause people to go to your site and to buy things. And I love how savvy you are. Miss Christina, what can visitors um, to your booth expect to see and maybe do? So at my booth at Arts at the Armory, I'm gonna have some of my pieces there so you can view and see the different types of clay that I work in. So I work in porcelain and stoneware, um, and we'll see four different types of clay that are there in finished pieces. And I will be doing, throughout the course of the day, I'll be working on a large format coil pot. Um, so a, a demo that will, it's ongoing things. So it's the kind of thing that I'll be working on a little bit uh, off the end. So you just can expect me doing that. And um, I may do, uh, people may be able to, to give that a little bit of a try as well. So that's what we'll see at my, at my booth. I love that. I, I have stumbled upon uh, the British Pottery Throwdown um, on Netflix, and now I am enamored of the wheel and clay 
and I want to do it, but I also am in awe of how hard it is um, and how much muscle and body strength you need just to make a little cup. So, uh, and I've also learned about coiling. So Christina, I would love to watch you in action. Okay, last question for the Trinity here. What are you most excited about for arts on the armory? And Christina, let's start with you since we ended with you. What is that we're all gonna be, I mean, usually for arts month is cute for us. It requires people to drive around and see a lot of different things. This time, everyone's going to do it with medication, so it's going to be really easy for someone to come, come for a couple of hours and see a lot of different videos, a lot of different products, a lot of different products, all of them. So I, I just think that's going to be a lot of fun. I think you're right. And boy, what a beautiful setting in the armory for it to be in. Katie, what are you most excited about for Arts on the Armory this year? Yeah, I'm excited to get inside the armory because I've been in there one time before and it's it's pretty amazing that there aren't more events there, but maybe this will help kind of motivate um, more, sh you know, gatherings because it's a neat space. And I, I'm really looking forward to seeing people I haven't seen for a long time um, and other artists because I think is I think a lot of artists can relate. It's it can be solitary sometimes and you kind of have to have that as a way to create and and get in that that space. Uh, but, you know, I'm also a people person. I like people. And so I'm really excited to see people and connect with community and get back into doing more of that. So. Oh, I love that. I mean, I love people too. And I, I miss that one on one with an artist sitting down and talking about why did you write that lyric, Adrian? So, Mr. Wordsmith, you get the last word of this interview. What are you most excited about for arts on arts at the Armory? Sure, uh, just to be able to share my art with other people and connect. Uh, the most beautiful thing about Tacoma's community is that there is so much talent and great people, and being able to be in spaces like that is always a pleasure and. It's such a treat, especially since the pandemic has really stifled a lot of that stuff. I'm just super looking forward to just being able to connect with other artists and share time and connection and that sort of thing, because nobody ever really does it alone in terms of what you're trying to grow and, and be about. And I always feel like Tacoma's community has been supportive of me. And I love to just have an opportunity to be more with the Tacoma community and uh, share my art and share art and connection and that sort of thing. You are wise beyond your years to know that nobody does it alone. Uh, that's usually something that we figure out in our 40s. So uh, good on you there, Mr. Adrian. <laughs> Huge thank you to all three of you for taking time out of your busy schedule because this is happening. Um, and 16th and 17th. Ah, 16th, 17th. Thank you, Christina. So you guys still have a lot to do. So I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for being here today and contributing to Tacoma Arts Month. <music>